Alrighty, putting aside for a second that I'm not sure I have the confidence to pull off that sort of intro music. You sure about that? Let's just start by saying from the outset, no one actually knows what you should be doing in 2024 as a certainty. Now, this isn't just true for investing. No one has a bloody clue what's going to happen this year. We can make educated guesses and we should, but no one knows. So do not take anything here as an absolute or anything from anyone else as an absolute because no one can speak in absolute terms. I will go into bat here for a few ideas that I at least think are worth thinking about. They're things that you should have on your radar into the 2024 calendar year when investing and they're thought provoking, but they're nothing more than ideas. You cannot be banking on any one of these things happening. If you are relying on YouTube as the sole source of financial information, you should probably just play it safe with index funds. I know that might be an unpopular opinion, but if you don't know, that's fine. Take the need to have knowledge out of the equation and you'll do really well. With that said, we've got a couple of big ticket items. Things like inflation still remaining high, even though numbers look more positive more recently. And even if that does slowly temper down, we've got the global conflicts continuing and we still have some supply constraints. There is a lot to think about. But of course, that is true for literally every financial year. After a year in 2023 which defied the predictions made, you'd be forgiven for not wanting to engage too seriously with forecasts for 2024. A lot of people said a lot of stuff that did not happen, because a lot of people make money out of talking about stuff, myself kind of included when I sit here with videos like this. Still, let's look at what we do know and put projections and models aside. Here's five things that seem pretty certain right now, beginning in 2024. Alright, so number one, technology is still a strong pick. There was some serious pain at times last year with tech stocks, but there is no question of the growing involvement of technology with every facet of the economy and our daily lives, and the emergence of AI still poses ever more questions for what the immediate future will look like. Warren Buffett has finally come around. He's seen that it's unavoidable that he gets exposure to tech stocks in the last decade, and that continues to be true with the investment strategy that Berkshire Hathaway is adopting. The AI revolution gained a lot of pace last year and it continued to push for electrification and renewable technology provides a lot of other room for growth in technology stocks in 2024. You should have some exposure. There are a lot of positives for this sector. But let's not forget that some good companies in the tech sector took an absolute beating in 2023. And we can never forget that the potential of tech stocks, which makes us very excited when buying them, leads to speculation and bubbles. People get very excited about the possible upside because they see the enormous growth experienced by tech companies like Facebook, like Amazon, like Microsoft and Apple, and they want a part of it. And that's fine. The problem is that can lead to inflated prices I'm not saying there is one, but a lot of people also didn't realise that there was a bubble in the early 2000s when tech stocks, particularly the dot-com stocks, took an absolute hammering. Still, with that caveat in mind, I do think that exposure to technology stocks is effectively a near requirement. Even if you're only doing so directly through broad index funds, for example holding the S&P 500, you should have at some level in your portfolio exposure to tech stocks. Alright, number two. What about miners? Won't somebody please think of the children? What kind of an example are we setting? No, I'm not talking about miners as in children, but mining companies, which are always pretty solid bets. See, that is funny. That is a joke. People, particularly if they are of the more green persuasion, can get pretty frustrated with miners. And fair enough. Do not make me defend the actions of BHP or Rio Tinto. I'm not saying they're ethical companies, but miners do do well, and there's a reason. What they dig out of the ground underpins so many industries and so many necessities that there is always going to be a role for mining companies. And 2024 does pose an additional consideration from previous years with the electrification trend only picking up greater speed and renewable companies becoming both increasingly profitable but important in the sector as the transition to green energy continues. Now with the needs of successful market dial-ins like Tesla only growing, the companies who mine those materials that they need for their 
their business. So for Tesla, an easy example would be lithium for their batteries, but the companies who mine that stand to do really well. So if you are thinking for the long term here in 2024 of your investments, there is a lot to be said for mining companies, particularly mining companies of raw material used in the green tech transition, such as lithium, copper, gold, uranium, they're all really solid bets. Number three, fixed income is actually looking really good. I can say this as a matter of anecdotal evidence because I work in this space. With a lot of downward pressure and uncertainty, there is a lot to like with fixed income and a lot more than there has been for recent years, where capital was so cheap, it made fixed income investments less desirable. That is not true anymore with interest rates coming up. The cost of capital has fundamentally shifted from where it was 18 months ago. High yields of core government bonds are expected to fall, but bond investors who are locking up money now are locking up higher rates as of today. Of course, this is a good hedge to take as part of your portfolio to give you comfort against what could be a volatile year. Alrighty, so I said I'd talk about three good things. Now we should talk about three things you should be wary of. Fortune favours the bold, for sure, but remember how infamous that saying is now thanks to Matt Damon and his crypto commercial. Bruh! We can have some goddamn balls! What does Matt Damon say on that Bitcoin commercial? Fortune favors the brave! My dad said he listened to Matt Damon and lost all his money. Yes, everyone did! But they were brave in doing so! Don't invest in these opportunities unless you understand and are comfortable with the risks and headwinds that are coming their way in the near future, particularly here in 2024. First of all, you should be looking to dump the debt. Be aware of highly leveraged companies. With interest rates unlikely to fall fast enough or hard enough in 2024, companies that have high debt need to be considered just a little more carefully. It's not necessarily a problem. Debt is fine. I'm not sitting here saying avoid leveraged companies. That would be almost impossible to do if we're being honest. But the rising cost of that debt for those companies can affect both their profitability and the value of their stock, maybe for some time. You don't want to be stuck holding it in a downward cycle unless you are committed to the long term and you want to catch the upswing on the other side. And of course, if you're not concerned about any risk of insolvency. As a general rule, it is good to avoid companies with very high amounts of debt as interest rates are higher and any external shock can be detrimental to their balance sheet. It is not alarmist to say that equity holders can be wiped out. This is exactly what happens in tough economic times. A second thing, and this shouldn't be news to anyone after what we saw in 2023, you need to be careful about cash. I know cash is king. Oh, I, I like money. That statement can be true in some senses, but as a general rule, cash, hard money, it is under modern monetary theory, really only a medium of exchange. If you don't intend to exchange it anytime soon, there is a real cost benefit analysis to holding that money. One of the paradoxes of higher interest rates is that cash will not deliver the best returns even if bond rates do not continue the gains made in 2023. Cash is in some senses incredibly safe. You cannot lose what you hold other than by the slow diminishment in value because of inflation. But for an investor seeking to earn returns, the safety of cash can result in leaving prospective returns behind. It is the reality of FOMO, a trap and a genuine consideration, and it can be very difficult to know which one you're looking at it at a point in time. If in doubt, do not swing at an opportunity. As Warren Buffett says, the number one rule of investing is to never lose money. The number two rule is to not forget number one. Not in stocks or bonds, but in the old fashioned way. Left it on the bus. So when it comes to holding cash, unless you actually foresee a particular need for the money or it serves some other purpose like a temporary liquidity facility or an emergency fund, both of which are fantastic ideas, an emergency fund is an absolute necessity, short of that, your money would be better served and you locked up somewhere. Whether that's something very safe, like government bonds or property, or something a bit more speculative, that's for you and your risk appetite and the balance of your portfolio, but any option is almost certainly better than cash when properly exercised. And a third thing to be aware of, and this may or may not affect you, this is commercial property. And it is something to be avoided in 2024 and potentially the future. There are significant headways coming their way. Now, a lot of people watching YouTube, I assume, do not have the necessary capital to be involved in owning commercial property. Totally fine. I didn't expect that you would. But you may have exposure to commercial real estate through holdings such as REITs. And that's not necessarily a problem, but it's something to bear in mind. 
The good news is if you already hold those investments, well, huzzah, the downward trend is already priced into the value of most of those stocks. So don't worry. It's already priced into your investment. You've effectively lost that money in the sense that any paper loss has occurred. However, in terms of where you're going to be allocating future capital in 2024, commercial property has serious headwinds. And these ones aren't too different from what we saw above. Interest rates are higher. The cost of servicing debt is higher. And all these rates, if you look at them at any surface level of detail, you'll quickly realize are leveraged. They're not leveraged to the same degree, and that's something you should be looking at, because the more leveraged they are, the more stress they're under. And the reality is that commercial property is not seeing good yields. There has been an inability to pass on the higher cost of servicing debt to the tenants. And of course it has been. A lot of major companies have been downsizing space required. They've been allowing people to work from home more in professional services, in part because it would reduce the footprint they need in an office. This is not necessarily a bad thing, it's a change in economy, and in my opinion, personally, as someone who gets to work from home as a lawyer, I think it's a great thing. But it does have slow flow on effects to the commercial property industry and you should be aware of it. If in doubt, I will just wait and see how things go before I allocate any further part of my portfolio to commercial property holdings. So there you are guys, three things to get excited about and three things to be wary of in 2024. If all of this was new to you, huzzah, I'm glad to be sharing some information. If you're sitting there thinking, oh, I don't agree, that's silly. Well, fine, I honestly don't care. I'm not saying these things are absolutes. You could have very good reasons for disagreeing with me. In fact, I can think of good reasons for disagreeing with each of those six points. But the reality is, as general statements, they're worth considering. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you have thoughts, positive or negative, I'm all open to hearing them in the comment section. So make sure you leave something below for me to look at. Okay, movie's over.